Hey everybody, we are going to do a quiz review on week five, and that was the genetics and inherited disease quiz. Now, actually, everyone did really well on this quiz. The action, the uh, average was an 81.8, so almost an 82 percent. And there were every uh, every question in this quiz, at least 60 percent of the class or more, higher answered every question. So there isn't a specific question that I feel is a major issue. But there are a couple that a lower percentage, um, even though it was higher than 60 percent, answered correctly. And I just wanted to go over it because you will see similar questions on your midterm exam. And I just want to make sure that you're understanding the concepts. So one of the questions as I'm looking through this quiz is a pedigree question. And 75% of you answered the question correctly, but 25% did not. And I just want to go over it quickly just to make sure that we're all looking at these pedigrees the, the proper way. So you're given a pedigree, and you need to determine if which uh, type of inheritance it is. So the pedigree looks something like this and I'm going to try to draw this out and I'm drawing on a uh, iPad right now so it's not the easiest thing to do. I apologize if it's a little bit sloppy but I think you'll get the idea. So we, this is pretty much close to this pedigree on your quiz. And I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna draw the entire thing because when I draw a portion of it, I think it will become clear of why the answer is what it is. So in this instance, we have this one's filled in, this one's filled in, and this one's filled in. So. The question is, what is the type of inherited disorder? And the answers are X-linked recessive, X-linked dominant, mitochondrial, and autosomal dominant. So when I look at this pedigree, there, is, there are two answers that I can cross off immediately. So when I look at this, there is there are a couple of things that, that come out that point out at me. One thing is that every affected individual is a male. So that's important. Another thing that pops out at me is that there's an entire generation that has no affected individuals. So when there's an entire generation with no affected individuals, the one that we can, the two actually, that we can cross out is any answer that contains dominant. This pedigree cannot be dominant because if it were dominant, every generation would have affected individuals and we have an entire generation that doesn't actually there's another generation down on the actual quiz and that generation doesn't have any affected individuals so this is a, a pedigree that is skipping generations dominant uh, inheritance patterns you will see in every single generation so when you see an entire generation skipped, you can cross out any answer that is dominant. So the other answers we have are X-linked recessive or mitochondrial. Now this pedigree really um, cannot be mitochondrial because in a mitochondrial disorder, individuals are, are um, 
uh, get the disease from and uh, an effect or oh, well from a mo their mother and in this case there is a father that's affected and we don't know how he was affected so the fact that there's all males um, affected in this pedigree really points to an X-linked disorder so or a Y-linked disorder so there's X or Y where you'll get more males or more females so in your recessive patterns you'll skip generations so this one is X-linked recessive because you do have a skipped generation and there's no clear pattern that the disease is being passed on by only maternally so the only answer that makes sense is X-linked recess recessive and 75 percent of you answered it X-linked recessive so that's very good now the other question we are going to go over is one that 65 percent of the class answered correctly and that is what is the probability of being a carrier if you have two carrier parents of an autosomal recessive disease so in this case it says what you have you have y y big y little y and big y little y we'll make the little y like this and here you can draw your punnett square and you'll get big y big y big y little y big y little y and little y, little y. So what is the probability of being a carrier? So a carrier is right here. You have your big y, little y. You are carrying um, your, an autosomal recessive disorder. So since it's two, out of four that would equal fifty percent or one half so that was the correct answer for that question and that's why whenever you're you're trying to figure out the probability of something usually in um, this class it's going to be a Punnett square and um, those are the two questions that seem to give people the most trouble, although all in all, everyone did a great job on this quiz, and it seems like everyone understood all the material in this week. So keep up the good work.